Hello, this is MikeJ101, and I'm finally in the final stages of building my new Sterling engine. So I've got my the main part done, my displacer chamber is all done, and the water jacket and all that stuff. This is probably the part that took the most work. So that's done. I've got my um, my uh, uh, diaphragm all done, and so that looks awesome. So that should work really nice. That's all done. And I've got my new water pump all uh, made, so it looks really nice actually. Looks a lot better in real life because it's all nice and smooth. Um, not like the old one, which was really quite ugly, which are the pieces are right there. Um, but yeah, I took a lot of time on this one. Should work really nice. So that's good. And the, ne the final stage is building the frame and the linkage. So hopefully I'll get that done real soon here. And um, yeah, so here's some of the designs I was thinking about. So this is actually the original design with the piston. So this. Um, design did, took up a lot of space, um, so the pistons over here, and then the flywheel, and this is the displacer, and so it takes up a lot of space. And the number there shows the number of friction points on the um, on the linkage, not counting the flywheel and all that stuff, just the just the linkage. So there'd be a friction point here, so there'd be a friction point here on this one, two here, and one there. Um, and then this one is actually my original design with the, or re really original slap job with the um, diaphragm. So I've got six um, friction points, one here, one here, one there, two on a flywheel, and one here. And that one's very non-compact too. Alright, here's another design that I just came up with. So I've actually using an L bracket instead with the holes in it to make it adjustable. And I make it adjustable because the diaphragm cannot receive very much stroke. Um, so as you can see, the displacer can has a large amount of stroke, probably, oh, I don't know, a couple of inches. Whereas the um, this, the um, diaphragm only has about, oh, probably about three quarter inch um, stroke there. So you couldn't have them on the same flywheel like this. And I really like this flywheel because it has very little friction. Um, I don't necessarily like the kind of the flywheel where you bend the wires because I feel like um, it flexes too much and it's just too hard to get it all perfect and it's not very adjustable. So I like the flywheel like this um, because I can adjust it more and I feel like it has less friction and less play. So I feel like it's more sturdy and it'll last longer. Um, so so I couldn't with this design here I couldn't um, have the 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 um, diaphragm directly off of this because it would it just wouldn't work. There's not enough stroke here, um, so that's what this bar does with holes in it. So I can adjust it. So it's actually anchored here, and then this is the part that goes up to the flywheel. So this, if this moves a couple of inches, so if this moves like four inches, and this is like a quarter of the way up here, this is only going to move one inch. So it it basically. Um, I don't know what you, this would have a lot more leverage here though, or it'd have a lot more um, pressure. So if the yeah, it's it's kind of complicated, but not really complicated, but yeah. Um, so this is the same kind of concept here with the um, diaphragm down here, and I'm using an L bracket, and it just kind of maybe a more compact design than this. Um, but here's another design with the um, bar over here, and I've got an extra wood support here. Well, actually here, there's an extra wood support. To make it so that I can actually, um, because this this the my engine design doesn't really have a stand. I basically just clamp it to like the desk or something like that. So I need a some kind of wood here so I can clamp to something. Um, because if I have this just on the side here without this board here, then I couldn't really attach it to anything and I'd have to hold it. So <laughs> it'd be kind of a pain. Um, and then here's actually more refined design of this, more compact. It's got everything on the inside, so it's um, easily easy to attach things onto it and um, easy to anchor it to something. So, um, yeah, and it's got the same bar and the. Um, I just probably will need to make it a little bit wider, and as you can see, I actually shifted the displacer over a little bit um, because there needs to be a good bit of room between the flywheel and this bar, or else it might um, bind. So. And then here's another design I came up with, which, which I probably won't use. Um, this is actually the adjustable bar is actually on the flywheel. And then the I've got all this extra linkage here to keep the, um, the diaphragm 
from going like this because that whole bar will be moving up and down um, and that just kind of keeps it so that this pivots um, and this this is actually anchored here there's actually another diagram of that on the next page so here's another diagram of it so I don't know if you can see that very well but so we've got a this is anchored here and then we've got these pivots on here but I don't like this design because it actually has it has nine friction points versus six and also I feel like all this linkage here will have um, you'll lose a lot of power going through all that flexing and all kinds of um, slack and stuff like that so probably going to go with this design here um, but yeah um, so I guess we should just get to work here and build this Whoops. so um, got to cut out some wood and double check everything if I want this engine to look nice um, I got to also figure out a way to actually connect it to here um, my original plan was to actually have the the clamp, the wood clamp around the um, water jacket, but I decided not to do that. Um, so I think I'm actually going to solder um, bracket kind of things onto here. Um, so that should work. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the bar that I'm going to cut out. Um, so it's all drawn up, and I've got the bearings set here where they're going to be. This bearings, this small end up here, is actually going to be the part that will connect it here, and this. Um, and down here is going to be the part that will be down here somewhere. And I don't have a bunch of holes in this, which we'll, this will connect to. So, looks pretty good. It's made out of pretty thick aluminum, where it's going to be made. Um, so it should be plenty strong, even up here where it's pretty thin. Okay, so I've got the bar all cut out. So now all I have to do is draw holes in it and sand it all up. Make it nice and pretty looking. Alright, so I've got all the holes drilled. So that's all 38 of them. Just random number I guess or just I just didn't want to make this part too skinny up here so I mean if I drill the holes up here too far it's going to um, weaken it so I only drilled it up to there um, okay so here's the bar all done yeah. I've got the um, bearings all glued in JBoo welded in got two bearings at the bottom there and one at the top and I've got the holes all in and it's all sanded up real nice it's all nice and smooth here's a quick setup I just made real quick just to see if I have enough clearances everywhere. Um, it's not going to run like this. Um, it's just just to see if to make sure I have enough room between here and everything like that. So um, my main concern was that this was going to hit the um, that the rod here was going to hit the um, the diaphragm when it's in its upstroke. But as you can see, it's not going to. So that's good, and it looks like it's going to work pretty good. So. Just hold this down and show you what it's going to do. <clears throat> so, looks pretty good. So now I just have to take the measurements of this and build a new frame for it. Okay, so now I've got my, um, I guess you could call them blueprints. Well, not so blue blueprints. So they're basically just all the dimensions and everything. So we've got up here the flywheel there. And this is all in inches, although the actual dimensions on the paper here are in centimeters but um, so I made a mistake here actually the displacer space move, moved over um, half an inch but um, so that's how it's actually gonna look um, with the dimensions and everything so it's 10 inches wide and 16 inches high so this is actually this is 16 about um, but it's only 9 inches this way, I figured that I should probably add an extra inch in there just to give me a little bit of a um, little bit of extra room just to um, make sure that I don't run into problems anywhere. So, okay, so here's the frame all made and cut out. So, well, most of it's made. Um, made a little bit of a mistake there on the flywheel holes. It um, the drill bit bit too too hard and drilled in all this really fast all of a sudden when I was trying to make the um, holes a little bit bigger there for the heads. Um, it's just really soft wood, so it did that. But um, so I had to just move it over. But it'll be covered by the flywheel anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but, and I also just got the um, the extensions cut out for the um, for the displacer cylinder. So those will go on there, and that's how I will attach it. Actually, the one will be screwed right on the bottom of here, and then the other will be screwed onto a small piece of wood um, that will go like this and it'll be screwed to the bottom of that, so right like that, and that should work good, so yeah.
looks pretty good. So now I just gotta figure out how to solder this on. So I think I'm gonna take this off and then I'm gonna fill it up with water so that this solder joint in here doesn't heat up too much and melt. And then I'm gonna hit it with the blowtorch while this is all clamped on there and we'll see how it goes. So here we go. Okay, so I've got it here and it's just clamped, clipped on with these um, two clips here. And I've got some flux underneath there just to um, make sure it, the solder flows well. I should probably add a little bit more out here. So I think we should give it a try and see what happens. I'm going to start heating it up. And this is all full of water, so should keep it cool. I should make sure I have my water here in case it overheats and starts melting something. I can put it out. It is all soldered on. It looks great. So nice, nice flow of solder along there. It's got plenty of surface area, so it's definitely strong enough. A little bit discolored there from the blowtorch, but that's all right. And a nice flow along there too. So that's good. Um, so it's going to be nice and strong. So now I just got to do the other side. So. Alright, so here it is, all done. So now this goes on here. Line up the water port there. And I just gotta put the screws back in, and the displacer chamber is all done. Well, totally done. Plus, the frame is almost done too, so that's good. So now I just gotta put that piece of wood here that will connect to one of these and screw this on. And then we will just need to connect up the linkage, and we will be done. So this is awesome. Guys, here it is. It's done. Finally, I've been itching for this moment. I'm itching to get it started too. Look at this. It's beautiful. This is months of planning. Well, planning in my brain. So there's the nice bar with lots of holes. And I made this little um, bracket up there out of wood. That should be strong enough. There's going to be a lot of leverage on it. But it should be good. And I've got my... Um, my diaphragm all screwed on there. I've got all my linkage made up so it's final and my water pump is screwed on there so that's nice and sturdy and it is ready to run but sadly you guys are gonna have to wait till the next video so because this one's probably gonna be long enough anyway so yeah until then um, thanks for watching